Unfortunately, the Falcons lost their starting left guard, Matt Hennessy, for the 2023 season. So we're going to recap the news that came out yesterday in case you missed it. But most importantly, we are going to run through five replacement options for Art and Terry Fontenot on the offensive line. Because I have said all year long, this team goes as the offensive line goes. So losing a starter at the most important position in my eyes, the most important, important unit, is a bigger deal than maybe some people are realizing. But before we get into all my replacement options, if you were here, well, you would have seen Roly Short breaking it down. So make sure you are subscribed. That way when news comes out, we keep you guys in the loop all year long. So hit that sub button down below if you have not already. Now, our first replacement option is kind of the obvious one, but we're going to run through some others as well. It's the rookie Matthew Bergeron, taking 38th overall. And right now at the uh, depth chart for Atlanta, he is being penciled in as the starting left guard. So Hennessy has been down for about 10 days, or it was about 10 days, two weeks or so. And in that time, Matthew Bergeron filled in, running in with the first team offense at left guard. And I think... This is your starting offensive line week one. I believe that Matthew Bergeron will hold on to the starting job, but those are just beliefs at this point. And we're going to run through why there might be some other replacement options. But if Bergeron does join Lindstrom and the rest of that crew up front, well, let's get you guys familiar in case you've been living under a rock the last few weeks. Uh, Bergeron started 39 games at tackle. Keep that in mind, tackle for the Syracuse Orange. Coming down from... Uh, Quebec, Canada to play in New York. Now he played right tackle, then he moved to left tackle, and now he is transitioning to guard in the NFL. He never played guard at Syracuse. The Atlanta Falcons knew this. They kind of projected him to move to guard in the pros, and they figured we love what we saw from you at tackle. We can make you a guard, kind of stick you in between Drew Dahlman and Jake Matthews, and you're going to do great at left guard. The Falcons loved him so much, by the way, if you don't remember, this is the guy they traded up for in the second round of the 2023 NFL draft to secure him at that number 38 overall spot. So what do you all think about this? Should Atlanta start the rookie, the second rounder, in week one? Or do you feel like that might be a recipe for disaster? And hey, there was a plan to move him to guard, but the plan wasn't to have him start week one, right? The plan was to ease him into the flow of the NFL, which is already a big adjustment. Going from blocking Boston College edge rushers to Brian Burns and the Carolina Panthers week one. So you don't want to give him more than he could chew, but you might not have a choice right now. So give me your thoughts down in the comment section below. Now let's say the Falcons decide, yeah, Bergeron starting week one, that was not our plan, and we don't want to force it. So maybe they go to Jalen Mayfield, a former day two pick out of Michigan. I think Mayfield is your cheaper, like, Kirkland version plan B. If you don't want to go with Bergeron because... He's been looking like a rookie, and we don't want to just throw too much at him in his first NFL game. Maybe Mayfield can sort of hold down the fort until Bergeron is ready to go at the NFL level and the NFL speed. Now, Mayfield, unfortunately, has dealt with some injuries in his NFL career, as we know. But when he's been playing 16 games from 2021 to 2022... It's not a good 16 games, 48.7 overall PFF grade. The Falcons drafted him as a tackle and then moved him to guard and then played him, moved him back to tackle. He's been all over the offensive line. The only position he really has not played probably is center at this point. But it was not a very good run for Mayfield. So I don't like this plan, but it is an option if the Falcons go, we don't want to go to the rookie and we don't want to sign anyone. And that kind of leaves us with Mayfield. Now, the third replacement option is an external option, and that is Andrew Norwell. We talked about him a few days ago, and funny enough, maybe Bleacher Report or whoever mocked the Falcons signing him were on to something because they now are in the market for a guard, potentially. The background on Norwell is this. He's entering his 10th NFL season, four years with the Panthers, four years with the Jags, and one year in Washington. He had one true breakout season, 2017 All-Pro guard for the Carolina Panthers. But last year in one season with Washington, he was middle of the pack, right? PFF ranked him 47th out of 77 qualifying players. So he wasn't a liability, but he also wasn't someone that really inspired you to come back for another season. Here are Norwell's PFF career grades. 
Overall, the guy has a very successful career, and maybe his career is over, and that's fine if it is, and he'll go down as a pretty good blocking guard all around, right? 70.9 overall PFF grade, slight edge in the pass blocking department versus the run blocking department, which might not align with what the Falcons are looking for as they are a run blocking team. But who knows, maybe you want to you know, get some complimentary players up front because you already have so many good run blocking players like Lindstrom, for example. At the end of the day, before the Falcons go external and start looking to the free agency market to sign a new starting guard, I think they're going to give the rookie Bergeron the next two preseason games, this upcoming weekend against the Bengals, and then week three to prove to the Falcons that he does not, that the Falcons do not need to go out and sign someone, and that he is a starting caliber guard in the NFL. He's got two more games and a bunch of practices in between to show Art and Terry Fontenot, I'm your guy. You don't have to go out and sign someone to a one-year, four to five vet minimum contract. I'm your, I'm your starting left guard. You drafted me for a reason. Don't have second thoughts. Don't worry about starting me as a rookie. I'm ready to go. And we're going to find out what Bergeron is made of over these next two preseason games. Now, before we get to my other replacement options, make sure you pay a visit to our sportsbook partner, BetUS. They got the best deal for the Dirty Birds. Chatsports.com slash BetFalcons. Promo code FALCONS125. When you put that link in along with the promo code, they're going to give you a 125% deposit bonus. Fourth replacement option would be a little bit of a move to swing for the fences, and that is Dalton Reisner. Now, Dalton Reisner was a second-round pick back in 2019 coming out of Kansas State to the Denver Broncos. And for the Broncos, he was their starting left guard for four years. So it would be a very easy transition going from one position that he's played for four years to the exact same one down in Atlanta. Now, Reisner has recently visited with the Minnesota Vikings. As I'm filming this right now, they did not sign Reisner, but clearly there is some league-wide interest. Now, Reisner's PFF rank last year was better than Norwell's, 42 out of 77. Truth be told, I don't know why Reisner is unsigned. He was a good starting guard for the Broncos. Was he an all-pro, or not, not even all-pro, was he a Pro Bowl guard? No. But is he a starting guard, no doubt, in the NFL? Absolutely. I'm not quite sure if Reisner is kind of holding out for the best opportunity, or if he didn't play his cards right, and he thought he would have been signed by now, and he'd be getting more money, and that didn't happen. But Reisner is only entering his fifth NFL season. The guy is not out of the league or anything like that. Someone is going to sign him. And so I wonder if the Falcons go into this year thinking, hey, we've watched a lot of Falcons Today content with Chat Sports. The Falcons' success in 2023, it's rooted in their offensive line. And so if Bergeron is not looking like he is ready to start in the NFL, maybe Fontenot goes, we're not messing around. Like, I know if there is another losing season, the other Arthur, the guy that, you know, writes my checks and everything and pays my bills, Arthur Blank, he might be looking for a new head honcho because he's not going to tolerate losing season after losing season. So while some teams might look at this as, dang, we lost our starting left guard, he wasn't even the best player on our offensive line. Next man up mentality. It's just the way you know, the cookie crumbles. Falcons might go, we didn't just lose our starting left guard. We lost a starting member at our most important unit going into this season. And the fact that Dalton Reisner is still a free agent blows our minds. But if he'll come to us on a cheap one-year deal and we let Bergeron sit and develop for another season and then he takes over in 2024 for Reisner... That could be a plan of attack for Fontenot and Arthur Smith. So it might sound a little bit far-fetched, but I don't think it's as far-fetched as you might think. So what do you think? Should the Falcons sign a guard? S for sign, P for pass. Should they go external? Or do you like what they have currently on their own roster? Fifth and final replacement option for the Falcons. I'm going to go with the veteran guard, Roger Saffold. So he's got some ties to Arthur Smith. He's entering his 14th NFL season. He was with the Rams for a long time between St. Louis and L.A. But he also was a Tennessee Titan from 2019 to 2020. He played under Arthur Smith during that time. And last year with the Buffalo Bills, 
it was not good. Uh, he was definitely the worst of the three veteran free agent guards we've talked about today. He ranked 72 out of 77 qualifying guards. So this would be Arthur Smith thinking, hey, I know why it didn't work in Buffalo. He was great with me in Tennessee. I can get him in a system that allows him to thrive. That was on McDermott and the Bills. They were asking Saffold to do things that he was not good at. I know his strengths. I know his weaknesses. He's one of my guys. I want to get someone I am familiar with. I think that's the only path for Saffold to make the rush or to get signed. At the end of the day, though, the guy's 35. He's probably cooked. Uh, he's probably burnt. I think his time in the NFL is done. He had a very good, long, successful NFL career. He made a lot of starts. He had a lot of great seasons, but I don't think he's got much wick left on that candle. So I doubt this is the avenue the, tennis, uh, the uh, Falcons go. But if Arthur Smith does want to reunite with a former player, this could be an option for that. That's going to do it for us on today's show. No draft today. Roly is off. So, unfortunately, we're just going to have to end with the usual. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment, all that good stuff if you enjoyed our content. And we'll see everyone later.